Now Billy did for his... That's my wake up alarm. That's how early it is in the morning. <laughs> Hey folks, how are you doing today? So it's very early in the morning here, but I figured we could bust out a transcribing video real quick. So I want to say hello to all of the new subscribers that found me through the Billy Strings video, the dust in a baggie video I did. Thank you so much for finding my channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching all my content. I really appreciate it. And so I wanted to do a Billy Strings video for all of you. So we're going to be transcribing Billy Strings uh, cocaine blues from the old Spruce Sessions. Now, I want to show you something cool before we get going on that. So I hopped on my computer and I was looking for ideas and I saw this over here. So Old Spruce Sessions has actually commented twice <laughs> asking for this transcription and I totally missed it. You see, I liked both of them, but I'm, I'm so sorry for missing this request. It's a good request. That's why we're going to do it. So yeah, let's go ahead and listen to the break and see what we find. All right. A little cross picking. Cool. Very attainable. That's break one. Let's find break two. Slightly different. Nice. All right, there's break two. Let's find break three. There we go. Great, let's talk about what we just heard in there. So uh, Billy actually did a really good demonstration of the progression of breaks throughout a song. Ideally... The first break is going to be very melody oriented, right? And the second break, um, Billy did half melody, half just improvising, right? Ignoring. And then for the third break, it was all his personal opinion, just all filled up with a bunch of stuff. If you're playing fiddle tunes in a circle too, and it's going around, I love that too, when it drifts a little bit further and further from the melody as it goes around. It doesn't have to get crazy, it doesn't have to get wild and bizarre, but that feeling of the progression of ideas is really cool to hear. And it's something that we should strive for in bluegrass. It's an improvisational genre, so we should get as much of that as we can. Anyway, let's pop this thing open and start transcribing it. Billy Strings starts with what's called potatoes. Let's see how many potatoes he does. And while I tab that out, I'm going to answer some common questions that I get. So one thing that I get asked a lot is, Marcel, what transcribing software are you using? And I am using Guitar Pro 7. It's a great choice. It does cost a little bit of money. So it's something to think about, right? If you don't want to spend a lot of money. The reason I go for uh, Guitar Pro right now is because it has more options for how I export the files, which is very important to me with all of the files that are on the tab store brings me to my next point. When this transcription is done and this video is done, you'll be able to go to my website at the uh, lessonswithmarcel.com at the tab store and you'll be able to get this tab for free. So let's take a look at this and let's listen to the recording again and make sure that we got that right. Um, so let's add one more in there. Just a little copy and paste. So if you're a little new to bluegrass, you may be like, what are potatoes? So uh, potatoes are just a really simple way that bluegrass musicians kick things off. Um, and what it does is it takes the place of one, two, one, two, three, four. So it's like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. Whatever Billy Strings plays after that. So there's our potatoes. Let's look. Right, so it sounds like a uh, slide up to me, but I think that this uh, note right there is a quarter note. Da -do. Probably be on the right string, right? That would help a lot. <laughs> so I'm doing something that I talk about a lot in these transcription videos. I'm not thinking too hard about what I'm putting down. I'm kind of living in the moment, just going for it. And then later on, if I need to, you know, go edit or change things, I'm totally fine with doing that. Um, but I will do that later. First, I'm just going to get down rough ideas. I 
there is now there's a couple light strums in here. And those of you that have seen my videos before know that I tend to write these in parentheses. It's like little ghosted strums, right? This is what's happening right here over the C chord. Here's another little ghosted strum that he does at the end of this measure. So we're going to put it in parentheses right here. So he does something very similar right here, but then he's going to walk up into the D chord, right? I believe he walked up all the way here. Then he was doing some cross picking, but let's listen to it real quick. I think I know what the cross picking is, but let's listen to it again to make sure I don't, I'm not just faking it. So great, so I, I think I know what it is. I think I just played it right. But I can always check by hitting the settings wheel, hit playback speed, and under playback speed, I can select what speed I want. So we've been listening to it at normal this whole time, doing pretty well, but why don't we put it at half speed real quick and then we can hear things a little bit easier. We won't have to work as hard. So let's write that down. So one other question I get asked a lot is, Marcel, is there some uh, you know trick to transcribing this? Is there some software that'll do it for you? Is there some automatic something or other? And there isn't, not that I've found, no good answer. Not that I would even necessarily want that. There's strum in between those. Yeah, so there's a really light strum in there. We're going to notate it, though, um, because I think that helps a lot of people. So once again, we put this in parentheses. And then I'm hearing, da, da, da. And it sounds like there might be an open string up there that's ringing independently. After that, he's strumming that chord. Let's see exactly how that sounded, though. Let's just write something like this. So he definitely strums that. We get a couple ringing strings happen right there before we get back into the form. Um, I'm not going to notate this super carefully just because that's kind of a detail that doesn't matter. Which open strings he accidentally hits, I don't really care about. Um, so this will take us back in. Let's see how much he sticks to what he did previously. So we're seeing how similar it is to this. Yeah, so cool. Sounds like he played this through fairly faithfully. All right, cool. So the, the phrase that Billy's about to play is a variation of this sort of classic Tony Rice tag that comes up a lot. Um, he's adding this repeated note at the beginning, which is something Tony also did sometimes. Now, whether it's, you know, Specifically, a Tony Rice tag, or if other people did it. Yeah, sure, it's most closely associated with Tony Rice. Everything else we've seen here is certainly kind of an, uh, an older style. People might associate with like Doc Watson or something. But this look right here, definitely kind of from the Tony school. So I heard. Sound like pull off. Um, this is a classic Luster Flat G run. If you've played a little bluegrass, you should know what this is. And it looks like that's Billy's first break. So cool, as I go through and I clean things up, I'm noticing a bunch of small little mistakes, kind of as I expect. For instance, I don't know why I thought those were there. I don't hear them now. Um, and it looks like I have this note wrong. I'm going to take these out here unless I hear them again. Okay, cool. So it looks like this strum right here. I wrote down the wrong chord. Why would I do that? Let's move on to the next line. I'm going to add a little note here that says Billy's second break. Great. So let's hop back in over here. Let's see if we can find that second break.
All right, cool. So it seems like most of this he's kind of hidden the same way. Um, we're just gonna drop it in right there. Then he changes this line. Sounds like something like that. Let's just do it real quick. Make sure I'm not making that up. Sounds like that to me. That's what it looks like. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Going into that second line we've written. Looks like he's strumming uh, a normal D chord. Uh, maybe we'll just write it like that. Um, once again, you can see I have too many measures in this line, so I'm going to pop that over down here. Let's listen to it. You can see when Billy Strings does this lick and repeats it. He's uh, he's constantly lifting up his finger from the fretboard. And that's part of what gives it this Billy String sound. If you don't lift up your finger, those notes just run into each other. Some people like that, some people don't. Billy doesn't do it very often, right? Billy normally lifts up his finger. Um, I think I heard this leading into the C chord. I think that's true, let's just do it. <laughs> A lot of this is really classic language. If you're not too familiar with bluegrass, for instance, you know, if you're new, if you're listening to Billy Strings, you've been converted. <laughs> uh, you can see that uh, this phrase that he ended with here, we got a G note, like our the, the root note of the chord that's happening. And he plays this phrase, do 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 do, right? Um, he just did a very similar thing over the C chord here. Plays the C root note, do 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 do, and that's that Lester flat run that I was talking about. Very common in bluegrass. Like I said earlier, the best advice I can give to people who are getting into transcribing is to just be fearless. Just put something on the paper and be very okay with going back and changing it. This is part of a, a D major pentatonic. And that is part of a G pentatonic. So he's creating this movement from uh, chord to chord. D major pentatonic over the G chord, G major pentatonic over the G chord. But Marcel, you didn't write in that slide. Yeah, we're getting to it. <laughs> so this slide, we're gonna write in as a, as what I like to call the tiny boy. Um, so one of those guys, right? And you just scoop up into that note real quick. That might have been a pull off. Let's listen again. Sometimes when you're transcribing flat picking breaks, ending phrases can be difficult to suss out because, because they're so generic almost. Um, these notes are so expected, G major, pentatonic kind of stuff, that um, sometimes it can just be hard to hear exactly what they're doing. You want to fill in your own opinion, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. So we'll include his little uh, G run too. I feel like we're kind of flying through this one a little bit. Let's find the third break and get going. Sounds like Billy just started with this phrase.
So great. He's playing this all the way up to that moment. All right, cool. Let's get back in there. Uh, that was a cool phrase. I do like that. Something like that. Uh. It's really tempting um, to get in over your head a little bit. Like, you know, you hear like one part and you're like, oh, cool. And the next part after that is this and that. Blah, 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 blah. You realize that you've written none of it down. <laughs> you're like, oh, I got I to gotta type this up real quick. It happens to me all the time. Something like that. Okay, cool. So that's the first half of this break. Probably something like that. Da, 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 da. I would guess that long. <laughs> Let's listen. <laughs> All right, seems right to me. Da, 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 do, da. Um, so it's this phrase, right? That's the phrase that we just started to play. Let's drop it in there. By the way, if you're thinking about this and you're like, hey, that's similar to the potatoes thing. Yeah, it is. But we only call it potatoes when it specifically relates to the beginning of the tune. So in this case, we'd probably just call it a drone, right? Or a double stop. It's not really potatoes if you're not using it to kick the song off. Um, yeah. I don't know, right? In something like this. Sounds like he does strum it a little bit. Maybe I'll, uh, that's not what I meant to do. Maybe I'll put these guys in parentheses just for fun. Something like this is happening now. Uh, let's listen to how long it is. So right here, when he's playing three one three one, he's actually descending a minor pentatonic scale. And then right here, we get the minor third to the major third. This is mixing the pentatonic scales. Cool choices. I would expect to hear more major pentatonic as we finish this line, but who knows what he'll actually do. Right. Um, and that's true. He did do that. So this is more major pentatonic, um, which is what we would kind of expect. All right, let's see what he actually does. This is that same phrase, if you're wondering. That's the same um, Bluster Flat G run kind of phrase. Well, I don't know what I and looks like that's the end of the break. These are the three breaks that he plays. Um, let me change my views. I'll give you a better view of all three of these. All right, so let's go through all of these. So this is the first break. Of course, it starts with potato, so. Of course, I was covering up some of that. <laughs> but that was potatoes all the way through all of these lines. Let me start at the, uh, at the top right here. So I'll start right here, right? Uh, I slide in. Then we'd continue on to these next two lines. Here are the next two lines, starting right here, right? So that was Billy's first break. Um, let's read on to his second break. So starting right here, I'm going to read two lines right here. Scroll a little bit. All right, 
So that was the end of that second break. Let's look at the third break. Here we go. And that gets us into this uh, slide right here. If I keep my head down, you can see all of those numbers right up here. <laughs> And there's Billy's last break. Uh, not too tough stuff. Um, definitely pretty attainable. This is stuff you guys can all play. All right, and for all of you sheet music lovers, uh, this will be available in traditional notation. Um, I just haven't gone through and edited it yet. But I'll go through and I'll make this look real pretty in the sheet music as well. And that will also be available on the site. So when you grab this tab for free, you'll have multiple download options for traditional notation and tab or just tab or just sheet music, whatever you want. We're really getting as much use out of that green screen as we possibly can, right? All right, cool folks. If you liked hanging out with the biggest, baddest Billy Goat in the barnyard, <laughs> you can go to my website, Lessons with Marcel, and you can get this tab for free. Of course, there's a bunch of other tabs that are free on there. Of course, there are some paid transcriptions. There's a bunch of merch on there as well. Of course, you can sign up for Skype lessons. Uh, if you want to hang out here on YouTube, please like, comment, subscribe. You know all the standard things to do. And also, let's give a little love to uh, the Old Spruce Sessions for recommending this video. Um, I hope they liked how it came out, and I hope they appreciate the transcription. So uh, we'll see you all next week for something else exciting. When that train comes tumbling down From the mountains cold We ring them bells at the crossroads Through the valley